Hello friends out in the garden and I am going to show you a few harvesting tips for some of your herbs and I'm also going to talk really quickly about how to save some of them, how I best like to do it. I ha I'll link to videos that show it a little bit better, um, more specifically about different herbs, but I'm just going to start here. Right now we have lavender. I know a lot of you grow lavender, I've seen you guys talk about it. Um, the bees are loving this one right now, so I'm not going to cut it, but I'm going to show you how to cut it if you so desire when the time is right for you to do so. So what it, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put, take your hands and kind of like make a circle and you're going to want to make sure you just get, and I like to grab like a good clump in a line, kind of like this. See how it's kind of like all along the plant here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut right here. We do not want to get any of the old growth, the original growth. We only want to be cutting at the new growth. This keeps the plant super healthy. We're not damaging it. We're not exposing it to any harm. And, um, and then we're just going to dry it in clumps like that. So I have some up on my table right now. I clipped from an older plant. Lavender actually is harvestable, like grows with different bloom times. So different varieties have different bloom moments. So, and some of them continue to bloom, depends. So right here, I have some lavender that I dried already. So I'm just gonna put a string around this and then hang it upside down like this on a hook and let it go. You can also keep it fresh um, but once it's dried, you can take the flowers and shed them off of the stem and utilize them for whatever reasons you want. I add them to tea. I put them into oils that I infuse with lavender um, so that I can use them for my skin in the middle of the winter when it is so dry. <laughs> but there's lots of other herbs I'm going to go through really quick. I excuse the sounds. There is construction going on. Um, if you hear that. So there's also lemon balm. I'm about to clip this guy. He's huge. Um, he's three years old. So I believe it's a he. Um, but I'm going to come right down to the base. I mean, we are at the ground level here. And I'm going to cut her back. This is not like lavender. This is all new growth. This plant's core is in the ground so we can harvest right here and then I'm going to grab it just like the lavender hang it upside down and dry it you can also put it as individual leaves in the dehydrator um the lemon balm has a lot of calming effects it smells like lemons it's beautiful it's wonderful it makes for great tea um and then when you're it's all dry the leaves should be crushable you can just put it in the food processor do it by hand I usually do it by hand because I I hate cleaning my food processor so <laughs> I'm sure I'm not alone and but just take a moment this is really beautiful we also have yarrow here which yarrow is another herb that you can dry for medicinal reasons it helps reduce fevers things like that um there's a soccer ball hiding back there but we just all have these beautiful plants coming up right here and I just had to share um okay then let's go over here we got thyme now thyme is from the same family as lavender and so it's gonna be harvestable in a very similar way this guy we have four different varieties I believe in here but this guy has um, he's really big he's three years old um, I actually think this one might be a female who knows but it's beautiful it's flowering right now the bees love it so I probably won't harvest until it's done flowering but you're gonna want to come in just like the lavender grab it in a line because how the plant moves is there's a wood woody stem right underneath. You can see how I made the mistake over here of doing too much clipping too far back into the plant. Um, and But you can see how there's like these woody lines and stems. And those are what we want to avoid cutting. I made the mistake. Um, I think it was me anyways. I'm going to say it was me. I... I had other people helping, but, um, so here again, you can see the old growth and the new growth. Now, I do suggest wearing gloves in this moment. If your time is very big, spiders do like to hide in there. So this is why we wear garden gloves. And so anyways, you're going to want to clip it 
and you can dry it just like you did the lavender in the lemon balm. Same exact method. Okay, now we're gonna move over to sage. I have a rather big, well first, this is marshmallow. Marshmallow, you can see it's very tall. Um, goes all the way down. And marshmallow is a really great healing herb, um, like skin wise, and so you can take the leaves and actually add them directly into oil and infuse them, and it helps heal the skin. You can see the flowers are like orchids. They're beautiful, tiny little things that I just love in the garden personally. So it's one of my favorite little plants and it's perennial. Okay, so now we're gonna go to sage. Sage, once again, is a plant just in the same family as lavender. So you're gonna go through the same exact process again. You're, sorry, the porridge got in the way. You're gonna clip it the same way. Now, this one does really well in a dehydrator. So you can do that. You can utilize it that way. You can also fry these. I love to just let it air dry and it does just fine. But you can condense the oils of the sage and make it taste even more strong by just putting it into the dehydrator if you have one. Herbs do so well in dehydrators. Um, it's just constantly gotta run it. I'm gonna share the bee enjoying the borage. Now, borage is not one that we can really do much with. It's kind of like in the moment. It really is just pollinator focused. You can eat the leaves when they're young um, and you can eat the flowers. They taste like cucumbers. You just pluck them off. And these guys do really great in cocktails or just fancy little ice cubes, whatever you wanna use. So they're wonderful. Uh, let's see. Uh, trying to see what else we got in here. Okay, we got some Tulsi basil. Oh, lemongrass, um, or not lemongrass, uh, lemon verbena. So mine's hiding back here. This guy will get huge by the end of the summer, but I clip it just like I was showing that you can clip basil. You wanna kinda, it helps it bush the more you clip it. So, and then the leaves are what we're gonna save. So then you can dehydrate those. I air dried them last year and, I, and then I did ones that were, um, uh, done in the dehydrator and the ones in the dehydrator were significantly better. So I'm actually going to take some of this guy with me because he's ready to go. Um, Shiso, I think it's best fresh. Here's more lemon verbena. Um, dill and cilantro. Let's go to those. Let me just find some. Oh, oregano. I have a little oregano here, a larger one on the porch. They are going to, you know, they got the same little leaves on them, kind of like basil or snapdragons. They can be cut right above those nodes and then you can create a more, uh, a bushier plant as it comes up. I have a small field of basil here, but this is a second round that will be later in the summer. Um, I found a really good one last night. Let me find her. Oh, let's talk about mint really quick. Mint, similar to lemon balm, can be clipped pretty intensely right to the base and then dried. Once again, this can be best in the dehydrator because it condenses the oils and the flavor. I'm gonna say the same thing about basil. I think it doesn't, don't even try doing air dry basil. It's not even worth it. Um, use dehydrator, it's the best way. Okay, so I have a beautiful little basil plant over here and you can see it and what we want to do is we're going to want to be clipping it right here i'm doing it with my fingers i suggest doing it not with fingers and you'll see there's like two leaves this one's going to be a little bit better and we want to keep doing this so it keeps creating these like pairs of leaves those are going to become larger leaves this is kind of like pinching like we do with our zinnias and things like that so taking all these because I am gonna dehydrate some. I've already done multitudes of it this year. And you can do this with any type of basil, any type. So there's 150 different varieties of basil. You can treat them all the same. Next, the dill has decided she wants to hang out. So um, this one is going to seed. It has been utilized by swallowtails for the last few weeks. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna, you know, utilize what I want from this plant for pickling and things like that. And then at the end, I'm gonna wait till these become seed covered. Once they're seed covered, 
I am going to save them once they've fully dried on the plant. You can remove them. Now seed direct seeds itself very quickly, very easily. So we want to remove them soon so it doesn't go crazy. Um, but there's also nothing wrong with having too much of it. It's wonderful in the early spring. You can clip it, put it into salads. It's not so bad of a reseeding plant. It's not like tomatillos, <laughs> um, who I always have to have discussions with. Um, let's see, what else do we have in here that needs... Oh, cilantro. Most likely your cilantro is about to or is bolting if it hasn't already. No worries. Let her bolt. Let her go. Um, as they would say in Frozen. <laughs> Sorry, I have small children, clearly, um, and make corny jokes. So this is a bolting cilantro. So you can do one of two things. You can clip it right down to its base right now, and it will come back. It's going to start getting more and more bitter. It's not going to taste as great over time. So this is really the end of its life. You can do that, though. But in my recommendation, I would let it go. Take the bottom parts that you want to. They will be a little more bitter than those tenderer leaves. But this is going to become huge and beautiful and then just like the dill it's going to do the same thing even though they're not the same plant they're similar um it's going to have the seed pods that are going to be these little green balls after the flowers are formed and you can harvest those and let them dry out um or you can just like let them dry on the seed head and then sh like pull them all off it's tedious work but definitely worth it because they're great in pickling recipes towards the end of the season. And they're really awesome to cook with, to grind up. We use coriander, and that's what it is, all the time in cooking, all winter. So it's really worth it to save at least quite a bit of it. So this patch right here, I probably won't let do that. I'll probably let the next batch do this, but, um, or a different batch I have somewhere in here, it's around. Um, those ones will probably be my seed ones, but these guys probably will be pulled because I have other plants in here that I want to kind of take off. And yeah, so that's mainly all of the herbs right now that you would be going and experiencing. Just remember to be continuing to encourage your basil to bush so it goes for a longer period of time. You're going to notice it becomes woodier at the ends. That's very normal. This is why we succession plant basil which you can do. You have plenty of time right now to still do that if you want to. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have specific questions about specific herbs, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. We're going to continue these Teaching Tuesdays. If there's something you want me to cover, I will. I am more than happy to. So um, I'm always just kind of guessing what you guys want me to talk about and looking at like, what am I doing? What's going on in the garden? So um, yeah. So just pop in, drop me a message, whatever works to let me know what you guys want to talk more about. So till then, I'll see you in the garden, okay? <laughs>